It is said, he who finds a herb finds a cure. This resonates with another timeless truth that nature is the best physician. It's not the physical treatment that heals us, it is nature herself. Even the medical oath acknowledges this, reminding us that while physicians treat, it is God who heals. One of my fondest memories was the day I saw my grandmother gulp down a concussion brewed from all sorts of leaves and bags. I was so shocked that I ran out and gathered everyone, shouting that grandma was trying to poison herself. Funny, isn't it? I'm sure many of us can relate to such moments. Even today, our perception of local herbs has long been clouded by skepticism and even fear. But the truth is, these herbal remedies have been treating simple ailments like colds, coughs, and headaches for generations. Do you remember the dogon yarrow leaves? Boiled up and soaked in hot water, it was the go-to remedy for many battling malaria. This isn't just our story here in Nigeria. Natural medicine has been woven into the fabric of cultures across the world. From India to China, roots, leaves, and bags have provided remedies passed through generations. But despite this long history, natural medicine has often been overshadowed by the advancements of modern medicine and technology. Yet, the winds are changing. Advocates for natural care have been making strides, pushing for recognition and integration into global health systems. And here in Nigeria, we are starting to see that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. The Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency is gaining momentum, driving forward the development of natural medicine in the country. This year's Natural Medicine in 2024 highlights this progress as it focuses on rethinking our approach to these age-old practices. So, in this week's late edition, we'll be sitting down with the Director General of the NNMDA, Professor Martins Emeje, and the Director General NAVDAC, Professor Mojishola Adeyeye, to explore the fascinating world of natural medicine. Whether you're a firm believer in the power of herbs, or like me, someone who might lean more towards pills and injections, I invite you to grab a cup of tea, maybe even herbal, and join the conversation. I am Ekene Ndulwe, and thank you for joining us. Martins Emeje is a distinguished professor of drug delivery and nanomedicine, a holder of Bachelor of Pharmacy with distinction from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, Master of Pharmacy and PhD from the University of Nigeria, where he received the best PhD award and was enlisted in UNN phases of research. He started his professional research career, career about 20 years ago when he was hired as a junior research fellow in the Department of Pharmaceutical Technology and Raw Materials Development, National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRD, where he rose to the rank of research professor within 10 years. He has the patent for the first starch-engineered nanodrug delivery system in Nigeria. Professor Emerge is the principal investigator of several foreign grants, including an $11.6 million for the development of anti-malaria, diabetes, and tuberculosis drugs from Nigerian medicinal plants and the establishment <coughs> of the first nanomedicine center in Nigeria. He is currently the Director General, Chief Executive, Nigeria Natural Medicine Development Agency. Professor Mojishola Adeyeye is the Director General, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, where she is leading regulatory and administrative reforms through quality management approach. She currently serves as the Chair of the Steering Committee of the African Medicines Regulatory Harmonization and the WHO-based Global Pediatric Regulatory Network. 
She represents NAVDAC on the International Coalition of Medicines Regulatory Authorities and has been invited to be on the WHO Regional Expert Advisory Committee on Traditional Medicine for COVID-19. She is a fellow of Nigeria Academy of Science, Nigeria Academy of Pharmacy, an academic research fellow of American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. She is the first African woman fellow, American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists, a society where only 3% of academia receives such recognition internationally. Glad to have you both on the program. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. nice to be here. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, let me start uh, with uh, DJ Martins. Okay, okay uh, we've heard so much about uh, natural medicine in Nigeria here. Can you just tell us how uh, potent these medicines are, you know, when compared with the conventional ones? Oh, okay. Um, in terms of potency, uh, which is the question you asked, uh, they are potent. And um, it's not about Nigerian herbs. No, uh, although herbs belong to the, their botanical or biological source, uh, herbs are not peculiar to any country. Every country or every community, every culture have peculiar plants or herbs that grow in their own environment, uh, which is a function of the constitution of the soil that is the the makeup the geographical makeup of of that area and the the, the type of medicinal properties they have is also is a function of what is available in that environment and nature has done it in a way therefore that because the type of disease people also have whether people animals or plants also have is a function of where they are so the geography of the place where the animals are, where the human beings are, where the plants are, determine or influences the type of diseases that they also have, okay? And the solution to it is also in that environment by reason of the plants or the animals or the soil or the water that is also in that um, environment. So to that extent, they are potent. Herbs that have medicinal properties are potent after all about 40 to 60 percent of the pharmaceutical drugs that you see as white tablets or yellow capsules or syrups or injections have their origin from plants okay i asked that question uh you know based on the reservations that many people here in nigeria have yeah. about the use of these uh, natural medicines okay i can quickly um uh, speak to that this way that i think the media um also need to help us um not to push the narrative that many people are of the opinion that natural products is not good because it's not many people. If we are 200 million people, at least 150 million people know that natural products are good. You know why? Because that's what they have access to. Because that's what they use. You just give example of your, of your, of your grandma yes, or sir. mom. If we go to our country, our villages now, where there are no hospitals, what people have access to, is this herbs so it is the vocal 40 million people that is people like me people like dj nada people like you who speak english very well who have degrees who are invited by the media who are the ones that talk who represent the 160 million people we are the ones that our opinion is heard and we are the ones that our opinion tend to influence the, 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 narrative. The, the narrative. So if we say something is not good, because if I say something is not good, I'm a professor, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a director general. People will hear it. NTA, and NTA, 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 you will carry it. Yes. So people in US, because you are all over the world, people will hear it. But if 40 people in my village say it, nobody will hear it. 
But then you will think that many people are saying what I'm saying. But 40 people are saying the opposite and they are in my village and nobody is hearing them. That is our case with natural medicine. Okay. And that is why those of us who are, who are in this area who say, look, our country must rise up so that we develop our own. That's why we are in this fight. Because you see those ones that you are calling conventional drugs. Hmm? They are also results of research from the indigenous medicines of those other countries that we are taking. So if we do our own, we too will send it out and they will be calling our own uh, imported drugs in those countries. And it will be conventional. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, please, uh, you, you are heading the apex uh, regulatory body in Nigeria when it comes to Food and Drug Administration. We'd like to have your take on the use of natural uh, medicine in Nigeria. Like uh, DG here mentioned, we are part of the vocal 40%. And I know a lot of people from the conventional, conventional medical practitioners, they keep issuing this warning against the use of natural herbs for treatment of some ailments. We'd like to get your position on that now. Well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, to start with, I was brought up on natural medicines. Uh, I remember my mom, uh, we go either on our way from the farm or on our way, you know, or go on our own to get different herbs and make a concoction out of it and give it to us. For example, deworming. There are herbs, when we were young, we were using herbs to deworm us. She was using her, uh, herbs to deworm us. Uh, for malaria. So in short, I was brought up uh, with uh, natural medicine. Uh, I'm a big believer in it. However, uh, what uh, Professor Emege just said in terms of research uh, that we're supposed to do on natural medicine is not translating enough to where we want it to be. Uh, for example, in NAVDAC, we have thousands of natural medicines that we have registered. In fact, Nigeria is further ahead of many countries in terms of the regulation. Why so? Because we give opportunity for practitioners to submit what they have on natural medicine, to collaborate with researchers, uh, to protect to provide what we will need uh, to see as a regulator. We want to be sure that the drug, the herbal medicine is safe. Uh, so we do toxicity testing, we do some identification testing, and if they pass the test, we register. So we have thousands of products registered, registered but we register them as listed, meaning it's approved for only two years where after which you can renew it unlike other medicines uh, conventional medicines that if they all pass the test they can we will renew we will regis register them for five years and then renew uh, if this gives supporting documents the bottom line is that NAVDAC supports natural medicines uh, they've been doing this before my time uh, however, in 2019, March, mm. we formed the Harbor Medicinal Product Committee. Harbor Medicinal Product Committee. Uh, and that group is made up of regulators, academia, and practitioners from different universities. We had, you know, University of Lagos, ABU, uh, Calabar, Port Harcourt, OAU, uh, that formed the first, oh, that were at the first meeting. Uh, Harbor practitioners from all over the country were there. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that we pay attention to Harbor medicinal products in our country. Uh, in fact, what we did after that inaugural meeting, we started pairing up practitioners with academia 
because practitioners know what has been working mm. for ages in their family and whatnot, but there are some questions they cannot answer. What is the dose level? And if I'm feeling this way, what should I do? So we started pairing them up. Uh, Professor MAJ was uh, my big assistant in mm -hmm. this, you know. Uh, it's not just that. We also started educating our practitioners that some of their findings have intellectual property or should have intellectual property protection. So one of our meetings, uh, we actually uh, invited uh, trademark office uh, to attend, you know, to educate our practitioners. We invited patent lawyers from different parts, well, from Lagos mostly, from Lagos to educate them. Because as a nation, we do not understand the importance of information. We do not understand uh, the propriety nature of some of our own herbal medicines, you know. Uh, and I believe the country has lost millions and millions of dollars of what ordinarily would have been patented. Okay. And then if research is done to back it up, whatever has been observed, and is translated to clinical trial, it's big money. Big money for the country, of course, big money in terms of sales of such products, if it is fully approved. Uh, we, in that particular committee, Herbal Medicine Product Committee, HMPC, uh, we also formed groups. Okay. You know, uh, the groups that will be in charge of registration, that will be in charge of pre harvest, post harvest, uh, in, in terms of in charge of guidelines. It was a very good start uh, for, for us in Nigeria. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the <laughs> there were good outcomes in a way uh, because the practitioners that they're working with, the researchers, including okay. Professor Emeje, and uh, the researchers helped them to present their findings or whatever the background of what they thought is working, okay. which most, most of the time works, uh, as a proposal. Presenting such at, uh, as proposals, there were maybe four or five researchers that paired with about practitioners, and we they were submitted to at that point CBN was organizing was in charge. This was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, organizing groups to present um, proposals that could be funded. Um, unfortunately, things didn't really. Uh, there that were few, planned. yeah, okay. there were few that were funded, but it didn't include the herbal medicines at that point. So these are the efforts that NAVDAC has taken. Uh, we support herbal medicines. Again, before my time, NAVDAC has supported herbal medicines. After my time, oh, while, <laughs> while I'm still in the in office, office yes. uh, we started this herbal medicinal product committee in order to make sure that clinical trials are done because whatever we have observed during the listing or that led to listing is not enough to convince us as regulators and scientists that this will be on the long run this will be very good for example i have a, a herbal medicinal product uh, that i worked on why before I joined NAVDAC, it is anti sickling uh, product, very, very good for sickle cell uh, anemia. I have relatives, uh, two relatives that have been on it, but the fact that I know it works mm. doesn't mean that I can put it on the web or whatever that I ah, come and buy this. I'm not the owner of the, I, I, I was just the researcher. But okay. that doesn't mean the manufacturer can then put it on the web and say, let's keep selling this. Of course, we listed it. We listed that product. Before my time, it was listed in NAVDAC. So we need more support from the government. Uh, we need more support from private because it is money 
that is needed for clinical trials. Mm. Okay. You know, so that is, I, I believe, part of the problem. Uh, NAPDA can only do what NAPDA can do up to list. Okay. Then we advise them, please look for sources. We cannot give money for for clinical trials. It's a lot of money. Okay. Now, when you, when you started, um, you mentioned uh, the time it takes to renew both natural and uh, synthetic uh, medicines. Yes. Synthetic for five years, natural for two years. Yes. Why the variations? First, that's a good question. For synthetic, most of our synthetic or what we call generic products, generic, you know, these are products that have already been used in different parts of the world. Uh, such products had a lot of history in terms of research uh, because an innovator of a product of a conventional medicine will put a protection between 17 and 20 years, intellectual property protection, okay. uh, during which nobody can copy it. It gives it's enough time for that innovator to make money, to 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 recoup, to recoup all the investment that they've put into it. Uh, after that, a generic company can copy it after the expiration of the patent. Okay. Most of our products in Nigeria are generic, maybe about ninety-five percent okay. are generic. So they have history of okay. research history of clinical trials that were done by the innovator already patented already patented exactly compared to our own native medicines that we have not worked on for a long time so we give two years uh and hope that that practitioner will have gotten some help in terms of clinical trials but even if they don't we still renew okay you know so it is renewable so it's not like after two years, they cannot. All right. Let me uh, go to Professor yeah. Major here. Okay. Uh, Prof, we'd yes. like to know how far your agency has gone in making sure that uh, most of the uh, natural medicine practitioners in Nigeria are conforming to standards. Okay. Or do, and do you already have uh, yeah. uh, medicines that are patented by these uh, natural medicine practitioners? Okay. So um, the answer is yes, and I'll get back to that. But from what um, DG Nabdak said, let me just take from there to um, dovetail into answering the question directly. Okay. You see, and I want to give practical example here. Take bitter leaf. Hmm. Before all of us on this set were born, bitter leaf was being eaten in this country. And if you add our years, these three of us, if you add our years, yes. I believe that we are close to 200 years. If you add the three years. Are you sure, Prof? Yes. <laughs> if they add the three of us, we are close to, we can't be less than 100 years. If the three of okay. us, we, we can't, can't be, be less, less than, than 100 yes, years. Sure. <laughs> okay, so why am I, I'm saying this because you can see that in terms of history of safety of bitter leaf, it's not in doubt. You know what is in doubt? We don't have evidence to show that it is even safe. What is the evidence? It is written down mm -hmm. in the book for somebody to come and check. Then, number two, if beta leaf is used in treating those that have diabetes, yes, Everybody, thousands of years, who have been using the uh, uh, bitter leaf. Anybody that has diabetes and he consumes bitter leaf, we get well. But we don't have it documented. It we don't have it documented. Yeah. I studied in Asia, in the two most powerful Asian countries when it comes to traditional medicine or herbal medicine, India and China. And the difference is documentation. 5,000 years, you will see book that they will show you that this book, it was written about 5,000 years ago. We don't. Our own people will just be dying and you can't get the information again. So it's a big problem. I'm saying this because if only 
we have those kind of documentation. Mm -hmm. NADAC will not be talking about two years. Mm -hmm. You can even say we are registering you for 10 years. Because if you go to China, they call it history of use. Yeah. They will tell you if a particular herb has history of use, they will not tell you go and bring evidence again because there is documented is there evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me take it now to my agency, what we are doing in, in this area by the act that established my agency because the only agency of government in Nigeria that by law is established to undertake research and development in this area is the Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency. And we are supposed to ensure that every herb, every medicinal herb that is used in this country is properly documented. So what we have been able to do in documentation is to use just the few 130 staff that we have to send them out to different parts of the country, zone by zone, go to northeast. Everybody, we, we all go to northeast. It's not a, it's not a internet research, practical research. So we, we all, and I'm talking of what is happening even right now with the insecurity. I can tell you how many of my staff snakes have beaten because we went to the bush. The bush okay. Yes. So we go on our own to do this collection and identification. We bring them back to our laboratory headquarters in Lagos. We have digital herbarium, digitalized herbarium. So where we do all of these. So you see us having documentation, interaction with traditional medical practitioners in terms of their traditional medicine, because there are some things that they also do. It's not everything that is herbs. There are also some things they do that is not herbs. It might be animal parts and preparations. And, it's, and please, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. All countries, they have their own. I can take you to somewhere. In, and many, of, many big people in Nigeria even go to India and China for these things. It's but just yeah. that they will not talk. Okay. Uh -huh. But I know many I can call their name. No, don't call their name. Okay. <laughs> so you know, so but the, the, so yeah. so we go there, do um interaction, documentation, and come to in order to prepare the database for all of this, so that we can have comprehensive database of traditional medical practitioners, the services and the products that they have, then our medicinal plants, and the type of diseases or ailments that they are used for depending on the environment because quickly if no prof uh, you have to hold it there we, we are going to call for a break okay you know it's time for break now we've gone uh, deep into the conversation and when we come back from the uh, break you are going to tell us how you managed to treat those of your staff that were beaten by okay <laughs> oh, yes. you use natural medicine oh yes natural medicine and uh, this is where we uh, pause for a break now late edition continues shortly stay with us You are just joining us this is late edition on nta news 24 and we have been discussing rethinking approach to natural medicine and before we went for that uh, break uh, professor mj here uh, you were telling us uh, what your agency yes. has been doing yes. you know to ensure standardization yes. of natural medicine in yes. nigeria yes so 
you know, and even though it appears you were you were kidding, but uh, let me answer it because <laughs> we we do it in, yes. in our in and I'm inviting you and NTA crew to our compound, uh, uh, Kofua Biome in Lagos, and you see what we do in uh, some of these things. We use our herbs, and somebody stung with uh, uh, by scorpion. We use our herbs, and in ten minutes, the person will not know that he was stung. Okay, in ten minutes. So this is real life system. I'm not talking of going to any hospital to be given injection. injection. This is not to say you're not supposed to take injection. But I'm telling you that imagine if we developed this. You know, the, the current chairman, uh, House of Representatives Committee on Science and Engineering, on, right honorable Inua Garba, is from Gombe State. And he was speaker of House of Assembly Gombe State. And the day I was telling him this, he said, Prof, I am the one to tell you. There are even herbs that in five minutes, the scorpion sting will go. So your own, you are happy. You are talking of 10 minutes and you are happy. Mm -hmm. You know, he is he, he's, 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 he's a child of that place, you know. So, so that's how we do. So when we, we, we collect these and when we do our documentation, what is it geared to us? It's geared towards this. That... I come from a particular local government. You come from a particular local government. Even Bitalif, for example, and permit me to use Bitalif. Mm -hmm. There's a reason I'm using Bitalif, and I'm angry about it. Maybe yeah, I'll yeah. have opportunity to say to say something later. Mm -hmm. But Bitalif from your own community that grows in your community may not treat the disease that the Bitalif that grows in my community will treat. Why? Because of the differences in the environment. It's called botanical source and biological source. Because what is available in the soil, in the water, in your community, is not the same as mine. Even look at me and you now. Are we not human beings? Are we not Nigerians? Yeah. Do we look similar? But when did, we talk about you, standardization, it should mean that the one from your driving should there. be standardized I'm to drive, the same element. That's why I'm driving okay. there. Listen to standardization. Because standardization, Oibo, the, one of the problems we also have is that we think standardization is as defined by Oibo. Okay? Standardization does not mean universality. That's not what standardization means. Okay? So, and I'm saying that both of us as human beings, if, if you give me your surname now and I pronounce it, it will be different from how you will pronounce course, it. Yeah. But we are still both human beings because we have the basic elements of being human beings. That we pronounce it differently does not mean that we are not human beings, okay? The same way, and that's because of where you come from and where I come from. Plants too are like that. Animals too are like that, okay? So what is our role as researchers? Identify these differences. How does these differences affect the property of these herbs? The safety and the efficacy. Because... A particular herb from my village may be poisonous, but if it grows in your village, it may not be poisonous. It is the job of the researcher to identify this and say, okay, the one from this village, this is what we are supposed to do in order to make it safe and to make it work, the disease we want it to work on. Mm -hmm. That is standardization. So that when you now say, beta leaf from so-so-so place, Bitali from Akwaibon, Bitali from Kogi, you will now see the, di the differences. Even as we talk today, even food, I mean bread, take bread for example, it's DJ now that is here now. Mm -hmm. That's why she, that's why she, they can tell you that look, the bread from so 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 place is not good for consumption. Bread from so 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 place is good for con consumption because of the different ways those people have handled it. Compare to the standards that they have laid that if you have bread, it must meet the following standards for it to be allowed for human beings to consume. Okay, okay so as researchers, that's what we also do to plants. Then, but it is huge work until you are able to do that. It is also difficult to come out and say that this is what it cures. It cannot be general. Okay. Now, if you move from there to the traditional medicine practice itself, it's a different ballgame. So, you go to a particular village. You 
you, you know we are from different as nigerians we are from different localities if you come to my village and you have malaria the people even a young a growing young person we tell you is is mj family if you have malaria go to mj family you say you have stomach pain they say oh, go to Audu family you if if you if somebody fell from palm, from, from palm tree yes. from palm tree yeah. and breaks the leg they say okay go to jenebu family the bone healer uh, the, the <laughs> bone setters okay. okay you know we have the best technology in the world <laughs> for bone setting oh yes so so these things too we need our problem on it is that we don't have documentation so okay. we need to do documentation so what is my agency do i'm linking it to what my mm. agency is doing okay. so we go out to and for example that's why we can tell you where the best bone technology is today and all of that because we have gone out met with these people and we have documents now to show that if you go to emo states this is the kind of people that you meet in bone in bone setting bias state bone setting Okay. You know, from state to state, from local government to local government, and we intend to dive down towards so that we can go to the modular level by which all of this happens in our community. We'd like to know in all this, you listen to Prof. Emerger, in all this, uh, where is the uh, challenge, where is the gap in terms of uh, regulating practitioners of natural medicine? Actually, I want to also piggyback on what Professor Emeje said about sources of herbal medicines. And I want to talk again about the sickle cell herbal medicine that I worked on okay. before I got to Damdak. It is a pulley herbal medicine. It has three plants in one. The anti-cycling part of that it has anti-cycling, anti-infective, and anti-inflammatory. Three in one. Mm -hmm. Those are the three mm -hmm. physiological conditions that could easily cause problems for a sickle, cell, a sickle cell patient. One of them, uh, the anti-cycling one, has, of course, it's a family. And then they have different... Uh, geniuses and whatnot. That plant found in South America doesn't have anti cyclin mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same plant, mm -hmm. but different family. That's explaining mm -hmm. the differences yes. that Professor but the one, mentioned earlier. Yes, mm -hmm. but the one found in, in Nigeria, Nigeria mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. anti cyclin effect. And we have mm -hmm. the highest number of anti cycling or the highest prevalence mm. of sickle cell in the world. Nigeria has the highest. So what he's talking about, about sources and how that sources, those sources rather, are relevant to the people living in, the, in that part of the world, to the soil from where those plants uh, grow, to me is mind boggling uh, that different plants will have different functionalities in different parts of the world. Of the world. Uh, that I found out with research. But his point about documentation is extremely important. My own grandfather had an exercise book mm. that he, you know, he listed on, in which he listed so many medicinal plants. Mm. He had some for female boy. Mm. He had some for male boy. Mm. I believe in their own term male boy is cancerous. Mm. Female boy is not cancerous. Okay. So myself and my cousin of course had this. We saw this growing up. Through university, I still knew that he had it, my, that my cousin still had it. And I came back many years after from the U.S., visited, and I asked him, where is the exercise book? He said he has burnt it. Hmm. Wow. 
I said, you are born to it. Why? Mm. Oh, I became a Christian. That is knowledge mm. wasted. Yes. So that is part of our problem. Exactly. We don't know that documentation, documentation, mm. documentation. Uh, because what my father knows in his head mm. or my great-grandfather mm. knows in his head mm. cannot be translated to me mm. or transmitted to mm. me. Unless you read it up. Unless I read it up. Mm. And it's passed from generation to generation. So we have that's part of why I said we have missed so much in Nigeria. Mm. But in terms of NAVDAC and where I think the gap is, like I mentioned before, uh from the regulatory perspective, we don't have any problem uh with registering our harbor medicinal products. In fact, we are also in charge of overseeing the clinical trials that we so much want mm. to happen. Currently, as we speak, we have about six clinical trials of medicinal products that we are monitoring because we have to approve their protocol. We have to visit the site to make sure that they are doing it right. So a lot is being done, but not enough compared to what we have. For example, that sickle cell anemia medicine that I mentioned. Uh, before my time, that was July of June or July of 2017, we started, we started uh, a clinical trial, but limited clinical trial at uh, Bowen University Teaching Hospital, Obumosho. However, we did, because of lack of money, again, that is where, mm. where I'm going. Funding. For mm. funding, lack of funding. We couldn't do as much as we should. Because for sickle cell, you have uh, an indicator. Him, uh, fetal hemoglobin or whatever. Yeah, mm. that you need to see and monitor to see whether that indicator is increasing with use. Uh, but at that point in time, we, were, we just did before and after. But even with the before and after, there was difference mm. that it has increased, that hemoglobin that we're supposed to see. Okay. However, you cannot base that conclusively of effectiveness. You have to have a trend that, okay, we started first month, uh, th three months after, six months after, nine months after, it, no, up to like two years to give you more confidence statistically. But we didn't do that. We're going to do that to make sure because this is part of what okay. I've done before I got to. So our gap is clinical trial. Okay. And the funding of clinical trial. Uh, I was sharing with uh, the Senate uh, this particular example and they promised to fund. The government has to fund mm. this because many of our products work. Mm. I have a, cause, a niece who has been on the medicine for 2002, almost 20 years now. She has been on that medicine for almost 20 years. Mm. Before use of that medicine, she was always ashen pale. Okay. In fact, uh, because of the effect of sickle cell, uh, on the tissue, uh, he ha she had necrosis on the hip, so she she limp limps up till today. Okay. But she started she, the limping came out came before I met I knew about this medicine. But since that time, she has had two children. Okay. Without much with sickle cell. Yes. yes. With okay. without much episode. Without much episode. Of course, she uses uh, anti-malaria to make sure that, you know, she doesn't get malaria and get knocked down. I know it works. Of course, I was raised, I know it works in my own life when going, growing up. Uh, but the gap is the clinical trial. Okay. You know, if we get funding in the country, NAVDAC is always ready to monitor the clinical trial. If the products, if the, if the data rather shows efficacy, we will register for five years. Why are uh, traditional medic medicine uh, practitioners, why are they being downplayed? 
since all this knowledge is out there for everybody what we saw what happened during COVID 19 yes. when there was delay in bringing vaccines to african nations yes what is nigeria doing currently to work with this uh, natural medical practitioners to ensure that we produce our own vaccines in case of such uh, epidemic or whatever. Okay, okay, I don't know whether we are the ones that you should ask this question or because why am I saying this? Because mm -hmm. the traditional medical uh, practitioners, traditional medicine practitioners, they are ready to work with us and they do. You can see even from the first um, expose by the DG Nadak, he told you of the HPMC committee which yes. include all of us researchers regulators policymakers and the traditional medical practitioners to the extent that when cbn called for proposal during covid 19 researchers were paired with traditional medical practitioner i was paired with a traditional medical practitioner researchers from different universities in nigeria were paired with different um uh, uh, tmps traditional mm -hmm. medical practitioners and we submitted proposals right in fact even when cbn did not continue nadak supported some of these um pe uh, groups that were formed and they now have nadak listed herbal products as a result of that pairing yes. okay now because one of the things people also talk about tmps is that they are secretive they don't want to say what they are. why should they not be secretive did Even you, people did, that wait, patent did you hear DG yes. talking yes. about patent? <laughs> yes, what that's, patent? What, that's what it's I'm saying. Secrecy. It, it is. Well, why shouldn't they be secretive? Mm. So there is nothing wrong in being secret. What is, if, if once they know that if they can be supported mm -hmm. to bring out their information and this information will not be stolen from them, they will benefit from it. Yes. They, will, they are very happy to talk about it. You no, know, one, one aspect, you know, why I think many people are downplaying these uh, practitioners is that many of them are uneducated. I think that is a very vital uh, okay. aspect. Let me address that. Mm. Because I don't agree that they are not educated. <laughs> by, by educated, I mean qualifications. They are highly educated. They don't read or speak English language. That is the difference. That is why you people think they are not educated. <laughs> when people call me DG Babalao, and I proudly accept that, yes, I am Babalao, damn DG Babalao. You see, because DG Nadak said he grew up at home. I, I was even born at home. I said Babalao. I was born. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I understand. I was I born did. at home. I was not born in the hospital. Oh. Yes. Okay. I was born at home. Is that not... Is that not incredible? It is. Okay. In, in March this year, when Cardinal John Onaeka, who was the keynote speaker at the Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency's program at the Eagle Square, he came and told everybody that he was born in the village. I said, oh, Cardinal, so you were born in the village. I'm not the only person. We were born in the village. As I'm talking to you, people are still born in the village. So people are still born in the village. But we are Very not encouraging well. that. What do you mean by you are not encouraging? It's not about encouragement. Mm -hmm. Do you want them to come to your house so that not you take them to house, National not Hospital? My, <laughs> not my house. You are talking of encouragement because mm -hmm. you are privileged to be in Abuja where you can go to National Hospital. If you are in Usuka, if you are in Agaliga, you will no, I not... I there are primary you, health centers what, in all those Those places, primary so. health centers, what are they? Mm -hmm. What is there? The buildings are what is called the primary health care centers. So please, you are NTA now. You are journalists now. Of course I am. I tell you people, instead, go to the interior villages. Go and take video documentation of our hospitals. Come and play it on NTA. And let everybody who is working here, is, it comes from a particular village. Go to your own village. Go and bring the video. Let's see it. So that we are still talking talk. about qualifications. Yes, yes. And that's yes. the reason, it's not digression, that's mm -hmm. the reason why I said they're highly educated. Because of colonialism, because we were colonized, and the language of colonialism was English language. So we all speak English. 
and we look at anybody who does not speak English or write in English as not educated, as illiterate. Please, we are not the only country that was colonized by the Britons. Indians were, but they did not throw away their culture because our healing is our culture. We're almost out of time. Just in one minute, you know, let's round up the program. Tell us uh, what would be your takeaway, the takeaway for our viewers on the use of uh, natural medicines and also for government, what should be their role in ensuring that these medicines are maybe enhanced to serve the Nigerian population? Yes, what I would want our viewers to know is that uh, you cannot take uh, herbal medicines indiscriminately. Make sure that it has NAVDAC listed number because it shows that some research, some investigation has been done on it. Uh, the fact that it is natural doesn't mean it is always safe because a teaspoon is different from a tablespoon. Mm. A tablespoon is different from half a cup. So what we have done or what we do in NAVDAC is to make sure that the dose that will be safe enough not to cause toxicity uh, is registered or is documented. For the government, it is extremely important for us to see natural medicine as a powerful source of universal health coverage or powerful additive to universal health coverage and it is only funding that we do it uh, once you see three four five products being commercialized internationally you will see more of it being done maybe by the same companies or others being encouraged that yes, they will get some dividends out of their investment. But okay. I will encourage the government, which includes us, to fund uh, natural medicine uh, clinical trial uh, research. We do our part in terms of regulation, but we need more government intervention, private okay. philanthropist All intervention. Right. Thank you very much, Thank Ma. you very and, much. Uh, Professor Martins MJ, your final words Thank before you. we call it a day. Yes, my final word is to say that you see, natural medicine is the untapped good that Nigeria has. If we deploy our political will and financial resources by both the private and the public sector, government and private sector, to this we will be surprised that we will not need oil to, to, to fund ourselves in this country. Because we are talking of an industry that is estimated to uh, 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 be, to, to, the market size is predicted to be 5 trillion US dollars by 2050. But as we talk today, the largest exporter of herbal medicines is China followed by India, and the largest consumer is the United States of America, okay. but as of 2023. So it means that it's a huge market, not just for our well-being as a people, but also for revenue generation for the, for the country, forex, foreign exchange, for, the, for earning for the, for the country. And this is holistic medicine. Thank you know, you we much. say prevention is better than cure, right? Yes, it One is. sweet thing about natural medicine is that prevention is better than care. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Matis Emeja. This is where we wrap it up on today's episode of Late Edition. It has been a very interesting conversation with Dr. Matis Emeja, Director General Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency, and also Professor Adeyeye, Director General National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control. It was nice having you on the program. Thank you, Thank you for your Thank insights you and much. contributions. Thank, Thank you, you very much Thank for you. inviting us. Thank you and for I am Ekene Ndugye. Thank you for watching.